So BFA has recently got me wishing that Legion had never gone away, and as a result I found myself doing a lot of Legion content, most notably being Antorus. Now this has been for the purposes of getting my Twink geared up, however I was doing a run the other day and one of my compatriots in the raid was able to get himself the Antoran Charhound, and it occurred to me that I haven't got that yet, so... I was looking at how I might be able to go about going and attempting to solo the raid. Now, it's not feasible to solo on Mythic, and getting yourself a group for Heroic or Normal is definitely the way to go, as it's going to be a lot quicker than soloing, and it's not that hard to do. But of course, this mount drops on LFR, so I thought I'd bring a little guide out for you all on how I managed to go and farm for the mount by myself in LFR, and how you can hopefully do the same. So the very first thing that we're going to need to do in order to be able to do this is get ourselves into LFR of Antorus. Now, that stopped being available on the group finder when you hit level 111, and also you wouldn't be able to queue that way as you would be in an eternal queue with nobody else to help you. Fortunately, in the last patch, we did receive the ability to talk to an NPC in New Dalaran, and he will queue us for the instance. The NPC in question is Archmage Tymea, and he is just outside of the Violet Hold. Now, when you talk to him, he'll have a lot of options to select, which will queue you for the various different LFR wings of all of the Legion raids. The one that we're interested in is going to be Light's Breach, so simply click on that, wait a few moments, and your queue will pop for you to enter the dungeon. Now, of course, this is going to be faster and easier if you can get anybody to come along with you, but we're going to operate on the assumption that you are only able to get yourself. Now for full disclosure, I am using a Demon Hunter and I am 411 item level. Now though, both of those factors contribute to my capacity to solo this older content, the sort of higher end of the difficulty scale of what's soloable. It is going to be doable on other characters. I have been able to do it for myself on my Monk, but that was considerably more difficult, and as a result, I would recommend to you that you do use characters that have a high amount of gear, and ideally characters that are well suited for soloing content. So now, once you've portaled yourself in, all you're going to need to do is run through and gather all of the trash up to the first boss where you would jump off of the platform and AoE it all down. This isn't particularly challenging trash, I doubt anyone's going to have any real difficulty here. Although, it is a nice little test of your capacities to do this. If you are struggling with the trash, then I'm afraid you're going to struggle even worse with the boss, and this might not be within your capacity. If you can clear all of this trash, then all you need to do for the next stage is jump down off the platform, kill the new trash mob that appears, and then you will be at the first boss. This is one of only two bosses that we're going to need to kill. It's the gateway to get ourselves to the boss that drops the mount. Nice and easy. Now, the first boss is actually quite easy to solo on Look for Raid difficulty, as all of his abilities essentially do nothing to you. Providing you have a little bit of self-sustain, you should have absolutely no problem simply tank and spanking this boss. If you are struggling a little bit, then you can try and do the mechanics properly, and by that, I mean avoid the knockback that chases you if you are a tank when doing this fight correctly. It is going to be very challenging to avoid the rest of the mechanics, as you do want to stay in melee range of the boss, otherwise he does some weird stuff that we don't want him to be doing. Once you have got him down to a sufficient health threshold, he will go and tuck his head under and you can hit the cannons on his shoulders. And it doesn't really matter on this difficulty which one you kill, just pick a cannon, kill it, and then get back on with the boss's health. Repeat this process until you are able to attack the second cannon, do that, and then finish off the boss. It's an incredibly simple fight and not much explaining needed here. Once this boss has been defeated is when the slightly more complicated parts of this begin. Now, being a demon hunter, I am one of the many classes that's going to benefit for having extra mobs to target while doing boss fights. So, I use this opportunity to gather the relatively large amount of trash on the way to the boss and drag all of the trash I can find down into the boss with me before pulling the next two dogs. Now, the two dogs boss that drops the mount actually has basically two mechanics that we're going to have to care about. Not in the sense of how they were conventionally mechanics, but 
more in the sense of demands of the fight that we have to meet when attempting to solo it. Due to the inability to avoid a lot of the mechanics that were in place originally, we have two requirements. First of all, that we have the self-sustain to be able to survive the damage that these bosses put out because it is quite high. And also that we have the damage output to be able to kill this boss before we get overwhelmed. Now, I use all of this trash that I have pulled in order to funnel into my ability to maintain my metamorphosis. So you'll see as I pull the boss, I'm using my I-beam to get myself into metamorphosis. I then use the metamorphosis cooldown, which resets I-beam, which allows me then to stun all of the trash mobs. And from stunning them with my AoE of Chaos Nova, I get them to shatter their soul fragments. Collecting these soul fragments reduces the cooldown on I-beam yet again to extend my metamorphosis even further. Now, all of that metamorphosis time leads to a very large uptime in damage, which means that this boss fight takes a lot less time than it might otherwise have done, enabling me to be able to solo the boss. Now, in principle, I know of no reason why you wouldn't be able to do this with less damage output, providing you have the self-sustain, as long as, of course, you don't hit any enrage timers. Now, of course, the example I just gave was for Demon Hunters, but there are a great many of classes that will benefit from having the extra mobs there. That is up to you to know the mechanics of your class and how you can amplify your capabilities of dealing damage to this boss by using the trash. Of course, it isn't available to all classes, but if the class you're wanting to play does not have these capabilities, then that might not be the right class for farming this on. If you can make it work, then more power to you. The more characters you can do this on, with it being a weekly lockout per character, the better the chances of your getting the mount. The only other way that you can really improve that is to pray to RN Jesus, and that's about what you're left with at this point. Simply tidy up the boss fight and hope that the mount drops. But that's going to about do it for this video guys, I do hope that you enjoyed the video, if you did please do consider liking the video, and if you have any questions please do leave them down in the comments section below. And as always guys, I hope to see you in the next one, thanks for watching.